Hello and welcome to this uh, new video where we talk about uh, physics um, and mathematics uh, on the board. Um, today what I'm going to discuss is kind of the beauty uh, of trying to uh, express the Hamiltonian uh, mechanics formalism entirely from its uh, algebra. And as we're going to see, it's called the Poisson uh, algebra. And you can essentially substitute, um, well, like these particular kind of equations here that involve a partial derivative of h, etc., um, uh, with respect to p and x, respectively, you can replace this kind of differential aspect uh, by basically the uh, like an algebraic kind of structure. Um, and that's what I would like to show and how we get there. And we'll see in later videos um, or follow-up videos how that actually helps uh, in quantum mechanics uh, as well. Um, so uh, here, just to state, in case you are not uh, familiar or you've forgotten a bit uh, how Hamiltonian mechanics works, uh, essentially that's kind of tr traditional formulation uh, of mechanics where you represent the mechanical state of the system. And here, I mean, just for one degree of freedom, for simplicity and also for notations um, that are basically the state is X and P. So you characterize the state of the system via its position, if you will, and the corresponding momentum. And then the equations uh, of motion are given by so-called Hamilton's equations, which are simply that x dot, so the time derivative of x with respect to time, is equal to the partial derivative of a function h uh, of a, uh, with respect to p. Um, and then uh, p dot, the time derivative of the momentum, is equal to minus, in that case there is a minus sign, uh, the partial derivative of h um, of a x. Now, the h function is called the Hamiltonian of the system, and essentially it's supposed to characterize or represent the energy of that system. So uh, here, for example, a traditional uh, one, and that's on purpose, I'm going to use this one, this is just an example, that's going to be in a non-relativistic setting, uh, p squared over 2m, and let's say for the sake of it, like kx squared. Okay, so you've got some kind of harmonic potential here. Um, what I can, what we can di directly deduce here are the equations of motion. Um, so, for example, so here this is a harmonic potential, maybe owing to a spring or some kind of laser trap, whatever. That's a harmonic spring and so a harmonic potential. And so what we are going to do here is simply calculate that stuff. So x dot here is going to be um, the partial derivative of that with respect to p. Uh, when you take the partial derivative, this part, of course, doesn't matter. So you're going to get very easily uh, p over m. Um, and then uh, what you're going to get uh, here is uh, p dot, therefore, is going to be equal to, um, uh, so we differentiate with respect to x, and you're going to, to x, and you're going to get minus k um, x um, here. Okay? Um, so basically, that's it. Now, if you're more used to Newtonian mechanics, then the system of uh, two equations, which are of first order, can be transformed into a single system, so a single equation that is second order. And the way you do that, but that's not compulsory at all, is that you substitute p as being m times x dot in there. And so you're going to get m and then x dot dot is equal to minus kx. Okay? which is a traditional equation for like a spring, for example, okay? Or uh, a pendulum at a, a small angle approximation. All right, so that's kind of the idea. But one of the things we can notice is that, uh, which is completely different, um, is essentially the, the following, is that if uh, we, so we introduce um, it's basically what we call the Poisson bracket, And the Poisson bracket of any two function of uh, x and p is going to be equal, so that's the definition, is going to be df dx dg dp minus df dp and then dg dx. Okay, so that's kind of the, the definition of it. And what I would like to, uh, to show you is that what we are going to get is essentially 
one of the things we are going to say uh, to find that and that's fairly uh, straightforward is that for example if you look at x x then you're going to find that uh, the first derivative is going to be one but the second one is going to be zero and here both of them are going to be as i mean like this one is going to be zero and this one is going to be one um, so therefore you're going to find that this is one times zero minus zero times one so x x is equal to uh, zero and then here you're going to find likewise p p uh, is equal to zero and you're also going to find that uh, x p uh, is equal to one now what i want to argue um, and i'm just going to show one particular example the video is going to be a bit too long if i go um, uh, a bit a bit further but it can be done for sure what I want to show is that basically, for example, this first equation can be retrieved simply uh, by using this particular uh, algebra and then appended by uh, the uh, other one, which is uh, another set of, uh, of, uh, of points. So here, that's what I'm going to do on that side. I'm going to state uh, a reformulate, if you will, so reformulation, so algebraic reformulation. reformulation and I'm going to state that the entirety of my mechanics can be expressed as uh, the following so that's x dot is equal to um, x h then p dot is equal to minus p h okay um, and then I, I append to it these particular expressions here and they would be uh, sufficient so i also have that uh, x x is equal to uh, p p is equal to zero and finally i have that uh, x p is equal to one okay so that's kind of uh, the, the entirety of the algebra and because this is a bracket and this is a sort of uh, relationship between that uh, highlight a sort of non-commutative relation between certain of the entities it means that uh, i have a sort of product which is not the same as a traditional product uh, over the reals and so i need to give uh, to give a name to it so the actual thing is this but i don't want to use any differential operator i just want to use the algebra okay so what i'm going to say is that in general if i have any two f and g that are again supplemented by the, all of this uh, algebra here, then f and g is going to be equal, and I'm going to create a product symbol uh, that is going to represent what's going on when I, when I take uh, this particular Poisson uh, bracket. So I'm going to say that this is f triangle g minus uh, g triangle f. And that's how I'm going to define my, my product, if you will. And again, this product turns out to be related to differential operators and so on, but that's not the point. The point here is simply that I'm introducing a sort of product that is not uh, necessarily commutative, okay? Um, and I, that's the only uh, element I need to know uh, here. Now, what I want to do, as I said, I want to illustrate how we can use that to derive that particular equation, okay? And without actually using any differential, so I don't want to differentiate explicitly, uh, the this uh, left hand side uh, here so let's see how that works so that's the example I want to go on so we are going to get uh, x dot is equal to um, and then we are told that this is the uh, bracket of x and h and that's therefore the bracket of x and then p squared over 2m and then uh, plus half k x squared okay now, because uh, actually x uh, commutes with itself with regards to this Poisson algebra, then this term is going to be zero. So the, the brackets are actually, uh, are actually distributive. So I'm simply going to get uh, this is equal to x and then p uh, squared uh, over 2m. Now, the way here I'm going to interpret p squared is p triangle p. Okay, that's because we are within uh, a Poisson uh, algebra, uh, 
Um, and so I need to basically assume that th this is the P squared is interpretable as P triangle P. Okay, and that's going to be super important for, for, for what we want to do. So then I want to somehow evaluate that stuff. So the way I'm going to evaluate this, I'm going to say, well, this is 1 over 2m, and then this is x, and then triangle, and then p triangle p. So the 1 over 2m is simply a, a prefactor. Um, and then here I've got minus, and then p triangle p, and then triangle x. OK? So that, that's kind of what I have. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I forgot the 1 over 2m, yeah? So what I want to do next is basically try to express this P triangle X, okay? And the way I'm going to do that is by using this. So I know that uh, X triangle P minus P triangle X is equal to 1. And out of this, I'm going to get, therefore, that P triangle X is equal to um, x triangle p minus 1. Okay, if you want, you can pause kind of the video to check that this is uh, indeed the case. And so what I can do is replace uh, here. I'm going to replace that with this expression uh, here. So that's going to be x triangle p minus 1. So uh, what I'm getting here is 1 over 2m, x triangle p triangle p, and then here I'm getting minus 1 over 2m, p triangle, and then uh, I open the parenthesis and I get x triangle p minus 1. So then I can distribute this. So I'm going to get uh, 1 over 2m, so the, the initial one, x triangle p triangle p. Okay, minus uh, 1 over, let me check uh, how that works. Um, yes, that should work. So minus 1 over 2m p triangle x triangle p. And then plus p over 2m. Okay, so here it's assumed that P uh, triangle 1 is actually equal to, to, P, uh, to P. So here what I want is basically to uh, uh, somehow swap. So I've got a P triangle X and I want to swap that into X triangle P again. So how do I do that? I reuse again the formula here. So P triangle X is X triangle P minus 1. So this is going to be here X triangle p minus 1. So I'm substituting that there, and I'm getting the following uh, outcome. So 1 over 2m, and then x triangle p triangle p. Again, this uh, triangle, just in case you, you kind of miss the, the, the point or whatever, this triangle is simply a sort of product that I know to be potentially non-commutative. So I need to be very careful here. Um, and then minus. 1 over 2m, and then I've got a replace here, so I'm going to get uh, x triangle p triangle p, and then I'm getting a plus p uh, uh, over 2m, and then plus p over 2m. And so what you see here is that uh, essentially these terms are identical, so they cancel out, and what I'm left with is p over m. So I end up with x dot is equal to p over m. Just from applying the uh, algebra, and I didn't use any differentiation. Okay, So that's basically how you can retrieve the entirety of mechanics, simply from the algebraic structure um, of Hamiltonian mechanics and nothing else. So the so-called Poisson structure um, of, of the uh, kind of dynamical equations. Um, now, uh, of course, as an exercise, uh, you can try to actually have a go at this one. Um, and if you don't manage, uh, then we can try to do it together. So please let me know in the comment section if you want that I actually tackle uh, this particular equation as well to retrieve it. Uh, but otherwise, that's where I'm going to stop. And we are going to see in some following video 
uh, not necessarily next week, but uh, some later time, uh, how this can be applied to uh, quantum mechanics. So otherwise, uh, see you in the next uh, video.